Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to discuss about caching in Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse platform. Okay, so what is cache? I think you have already studied in your computer science course. That is nothing but a hardware or software component that basically store the data so that in future if same kind of request related to that particular data is coming, then that requested data can be served in a quicker manner using that cache data right so if you just see the architectural view it can be represented like this suppose here is the client and this is the original server where our data is stored okay now suppose client is asking for some data so first the request will be going and in between client and original server basically the caching server or the hardware or software component is sitting now what will happen so first time as request is going obviously here no data will be present obviously everything will be in original server so first time it will be going to original server it will be fetching the data it will be loading the data in cache as a temporary data and also it will be sending the data to the client okay now in the subsequent request if the client is trying to fetch same data then what will happen the request will not be forwarded to the original server because that is time consuming route right rather as in the cache as a temporary way the data is stored so what will happen from the cache itself the response will be sent to the client right that's what the simple definition of cache to make the requested data serve faster that's where the cache we use right so i hope this particular concept is very well known to you now if you just recall the snowflake architecture in a broader aspect we can show like this way that is first one is basically our cloud service layer which maintain the infrastructure metadata information security and all different kind of op optimization related stuffs also transaction management and the next layer is basically compute service where our different virtual warehouses run okay maybe that can be ec2 or some other virtual warehouse okay and then the last stage is basically remote disk storage that can be s3 or azure blob storage something like that cloud storage snowflake basically used to store the data right now you just think like this way there is a data engineering team there is a data science team or there is a business analyst team different teams are there in a particular company and now suppose a data engineer executed one query okay and that query is really a very high resource consuming query okay it is taking a lot of time and taking a lot of compute resource also then once did the data engineer get back the result suppose after some time the data scientist is also executing the same query then without any optimization without caching if the query will again take same amount of compute uh, power same amount of storage power to scan the data then it is not optimized right rather because the data scientist is also requesting for the same data what the earlier data engineer requested so if the data engineer's result set we can store somewhere then we can return the result set to the data scientist who is asking for that same data after some point of time very quickly right that's what the cache comes okay and cache works mostly in the first layer you can store the result cache suppose i am querying something after some time you are coming and trying to query then if you are querying same kind of stuff then your result will be much faster okay that's what the cache concept in simple words you can remember these three point that cache is basically automatic process to speed up the query right that's what the optimization happens if same query is executed twice and then what will happen result are catched and can be reused okay so basically snowflake will try to reuse the query result set whatever it ran for the first time and it will be sending the cached result set to the successive query execution okay and another important concept the result are cached only for 24 hours okay that is suppose you are running now then after two hours some other member are running the same query then the cached data will be forwarded with respect to optimization but after 24 hours if someone is executing same kind of query then again it will be snowflake will be using the complete compute resource and storage resource to fetch the result set it will not be using the cache and obviously there is another possibility that suppose i queried one particular data one particular table and that result set is cached 
and suppose after two hours another member of our team is querying the same table but in between that the data in the underlying table got changed okay that time the cache cache data is not valid right because cache data is still holding the older data whereas in our original location the actual data is stored so that time also cache will not be used okay so either results are cached only for 24 hours or until the underlying data is changed okay simple concept right now what i will do without any further delay i'll be going to snowflake okay now here in snowflake sample data here i am basically picking up one particular table here you can see right customer address okay it is having 1.6 gb of data so let's start execution of this particular select star query from account admin role okay so i will start running this query let's see how much time it takes okay so see we got the result in 38.09 second okay so if you click on query id here you will be getting the query id if you click on that then here if you go to profile here you will able to see the complete profile okay like in spark we get a diagram for tag similarly like that if you see here see it scanned the complete table and then it returned the result set okay how much processing timing okay then here local disk search remote disk search okay synchronization and initialization whole thing it is displaying in a detailed manner okay so from this particular profile we can understand that these 50 million records are basically taken from the original base table okay that's why this particular diagram is displaying right now what we will do we will try to execute the same query again okay so let me just note it down so here the for the first time the query to this much second now if i execute again what will happen see only 83 millisecond it took okay so first time when i executed it took 38.09 second but this time only 83 millisecond and now if i go to this particular query id and show you the profile okay see here what it is telling query result reuse so basically it is reusing the cache data whatever it's stored right so this is basically snowflake automatically implementing this okay so this is one of the most important performance tuning feature of snowflake okay and this is automatically handled not only that i will show you one more thing okay so currently i executed this code from account admin what i will do i will create an user okay a separate user and then using that user will try to log in in snowflake and i will try to execute the same query then also we'll able to see that the query is taken from the cache data okay not from the actual base table so what i mean to say that is in this particular layer if you consider the upper layer here suppose one data engineer is querying okay then that result set will be stored obviously for that data engineer not only that the cache data also will be used if some other member is executing same kind of query okay so let me show you that so for that what i will do first first i will create a role data scientist a simple role i am just creating okay maybe let me do create or replace role data scientist okay and then here what we will do we will basically give the grant usage on warehouse compute wh so we are using compute wh obviously in the free tier we are having this only so to we are giving this role the permission to use this particular warehouse okay up to this it is very simple and then what we are doing here we are creating a user hello world user with this password and comment user for testing cache okay this is the user we are creating okay successfully created and then what we will do we will grant the role data scientist which is having the permission to use the compute wh warehouse to this particular user okay that is grant role data scientist to the user okay I no need to give some other table permission or something because this snowflake table what I am using for this particular demo is available by default to any user okay. So I need no need to give explicitly select grant or something to the newly created user okay. Right now what I will do I will open this snowflake in a new incognito window and I will show you if I try to execute the same select query from this newly created user then also it will be much faster okay with respect to the first time what we executed okay so this is the user id for the user i will be taking that so here i will paste the username 
and the password I'll be copying and then here I will paste that okay then here I will sign in and what I will do I will execute this particular query only okay no need to give any grant to this user to use select query in this table because it is by default it will be coming I'll be minimizing that I'll be closing this closing this and then I'll paste that here okay let me make this bigger so here let me just choose basically here by default compute wh only will be used because this particular role whatever we have granted to this particular user is basically that role only right data scientist role let me choose that okay and then if I choose compute wh right database obviously this is the only database we are having now if I execute this particular query see it is taking 123 millisecond only okay right and 50 million row it is scanning okay so this is the beauty okay so if you see here the first time when i executed the query it took 39.09 second okay next time from the same user when you are querying it is 83 millisecond next time when you are querying from some other user then also snowflake internally automatically understanding okay this is the same query which i am having the results in cache let's use that okay it is nearly very less right at least with respect to 38 second it is very less right and even if you check this particular query profile here also you will be filling the same profile okay that is it is taking from cache data okay see query result reuse okay it is reusing the cache data right so i hope with respect to query execution timing how the cache is cache concept is improving the performance is clear to you this is all for my this video and at the end if you want to drop the newly created user you just execute drop user hello world user okay it will be automatically dropped you even no need to log out okay it will be automatically logging out right so if i go to worksheet here we drop this particular user right so let me check hello world user on the name yes so here see it is automatically logging out because we from account admin have dropped the user right so all these codes i'll be providing in the description box or in the comment section if you want just try it out get the feeling also go through the documentation you can explore much more things from there also okay i'll be providing all the related links in the description box this is all for my this video if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you